welcome to the very first installment of RN Cliff Notes. So I hope that this goes smoothly. <laughs> I apologize if it's uh, if it's rough, you know. Uh, but I hope to smooth everything out in the future. All right, here we go. So uh, we are helping students to see through larger concepts, and our larger concept today is. Uh, understanding the electrolytes via lab shorthand, aka the fishbone, right? So now, if you have ever looked into a patient's chart and saw that the doctors have made sort of a shorthand annotation using little diagrams that look like little trees or little fishbones, this is what we're getting at. And you'd be surprised just how much information is in those little diagrams. So it's pretty power packed and our intent today is to give that information to you so that you can carry it forward and do well on the NCLEX. And for those of you who have passed the NCLEX, so that you can use it in your professional practice to amp up your game. Okay? So anyway, let's get started. So I'm Cliff Davis and I've been a registered nurse since uh, 1994 and uh, master prepared and uh, also I'm the Associate Dean of Nursing and I am also the Advanced Medical Surgical Professor. I teach the capstone coursework in preparation for the NCLEX. So I'm your last stop before you go and take the NCLEX to try to put the icing on the cake and make sure that you do well. Okay. So anyway, uh, the very first thing I'd like to start with is the discussion of magic numbers. Now, when it comes to nursing and medicine, there are four magic numbers. And those numbers are three, four, five, and seven. And the idea behind this is that they permeate a lot of aspects of the sciences. So they're pretty important to know. So first up, let's talk about that number three real quick here. So what do we have three of in our body? We have three of lots of things, right? Just to name a couple, three meninges. What are our three meninges, if you remember, right? Dura mater, arachnoid, and pia mater. Real quick, dura, mater, right? Dura, hard. Mater, mother. So that outer coating is a what? Hard mother. You guessed it. All right. Then arachnoid. Why? It looks like a bunch of little spider webs in there. All right. And that provides cushion for your brain. And since it looks like a spider web, like arachnophobia, that's why it's arachnoid. All right. And then pia mater. Well, we already said that mater is mother. And then pia means soft. So in the very interior, lining your brain, is the softer coating. Right to provide more cushion for your brain in the event of shock. So, now, muscle cells. And this is just a few examples, but muscle cells, you've got your cardiac, you've got your striated, and your smooth muscle cells. So, you tend to see this repetition of three in the body, these triads, okay? So three, a really powerful number to know. Four is another one. So, you have four chambers in your heart. And you also have four chambers, so to speak, right? Ventricles in your brain. Your heart circulates blood. Your ventricles are where the cerebral spinal fluid circulates in your brain. So four, another powerful number. And of course, three plus four is seven. We'll come into that after five. Here. Five. Now with five, we're going to see it come into play when we start talking about white blood cells, right? And you're going to hear me use the, the initial K. Whenever I say K, I mean south. So there will be 5K to 10K is what that range is. So, right, 5,000 to 10,000. So don't be thrown by the K. All right. Now, LFTs. That's another segment where we're going to use that magic number five. And we're going to combine it with the number three in a special way. And you're going to learn that stuff so fast you just, you're not even going to believe it. You're going to be like, holy smoke, what, 
why did it take me so long to learn this before? All right, so yeah, number five, liver function test, LFT and WBC. The number seven, now this number seven is pretty powerful and it exceeds the medical sciences as it turns out. So, right, anyway, we're gonna be referring to that when we're talking about BUN. Uh, blood, urea, and nitrogen is what BUN stands for, okay? And it's basically looking at your, your, your toxicity level in terms of your blood. You want your blood to be as pure as possible, but if the level of urea gets too high or the level of nitrogen gets too high, then you wind up with, right, kind of toxic blood there. So, anyway, next one, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is critically important to understand, and you really want to apply the number seven here. And wow, it'll really open your mind when it comes to that. But our hemoglobin, just a heads up, that's our, our red paint around our red blood cells that help our red blood cells to carry oxygen. And the, the brighter red that paint is, the better that cell carries oxygen, right? Our red blood cells. Okay, we're going to get into that shortly. All right. So that's our magic number sequence. And now we want to take a look at the overview of the fishbowl. So there are five of them that we're going to cover, right? And then since you're watching this segment in a timely manner, we're going to add a number six, one that I had made up. Okay, I kind of invented, but I think it's, it's pretty powerful, I hope, you know what I mean? Hope you benefit from it. So here we go. So anyway, our first one to discuss is that one. And that is what's known as the Chem 7, or the BMP. Now back in the day, they used to call that thing the SMA 7. But now, not so much. That's fallen out of favor. But BMP, Basic Metabolic Panel. And Chem 7, why? Because there's seven spaces in this thing, right? So there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven spaces in that that make up the Chem 7. Okay. Now, uh, the next one that we're going to discuss after that in the next series, in the next lecture, is going to be that one, which is going to be the coagulation studies, or your blood's ability to build clots, right? And it really focuses in on time. So you see lots of mention of seconds and things like that. How fast does your blood make clots? And we're going to get pretty deep into that, you know. Deep enough for you to be able to apply it to tests and things like that and, and greatly benefit your patients. Okay, and here we've got the CBC at the bottom there. That's the complete blood count. And wow, there's a lot of power in that one. And that one is basically, just to sum it up before we get to it, uh, top and bottom, that's looking at your red blood cells. Going side to side, it's more so your white blood cells, platelets. So it's almost like looking at that thing like a cross. Up and down, what? Red blood cells are erythrocytes. And side to side, white blood cells, platelets. But we're coming back to that, so this is just our overview. Now, this guy here, that's the musculoskeletal fishbowl. Now, this is where we're going to be talking about calcium and magnesium and these kinds of things. And by the way, just a quick preview uh, to that one. I want you to notice something about it, right? Because doesn't it kind of look like, right? Kind of like a stick figure, st you know, somebody standing there just like this with their, with their legs apart. Just standing straight up with their legs apart. Right. And that's what that one's indicative of. It's your skeletal structure holding your body together upright. Okay? And we'll get into that. And now this X here, this X pattern. That one goes with your LFTs. As you remember from the other slide, liver function test. Yes. And that's where we said that number five was going to come in. Three and five, by the way. Okay? Great stuff. So, on to our first fish bone. All right, now. So, we zoom in on this guy here. And we said it was what again? What's the name of this one? Chem 7. BMP, right? Good job. Now, so we're going to fill this thing in, but the first column I want to tell you about here, right here, these two spaces, 
That's where the ones with positive charges go. And when electrolytes have a positive charge, they're known as cations. Cations, right? So positive charge in that first column. And you know what? An easy way to remember it, and just like hit me, you know what I mean? It's a, we want to start with positivity. How about that? <laughs> and that's cool. All right, now, the next one. In this next column here, these two, this is going to be your negative charges. And with your negative charges, if you remember from your, your vocabulary studies, right? And for those of you who have had medical terminology, you remember back in the day when they said that? And they said that the prefix A, what did the prefix A mean? It meant without, right? So if we call this an anion, so it's, it doesn't have a positive charge. It's without a positive charge. It's an anion, so it has a negative charge, okay? So run it back, cations, right? What was this one again? Anions, right? And then here, this is going to be your neutral charges. So these get a goose egg, right? Just a zero, all right? So, and, and what I do sometimes is, you know, I, instead of drawing a zero above those, I'll change that zero to a kidney bean shape. And why did I change it to a kidney bean shape? Because that's where your kidney function studies go. Your BUN at the top and creatinine at the bottom, right? And we're going to get rather deep into that, okay? And now this next one, this last one, going in here, is where glucose comes into play. And it's very interesting that right here next to your kidney studies, right, that glucose will be sort of slicing in here. And what's one of the conditions that we see in our diabetic patients, right, when, they're, when the disease process is far gone, right? You guessed it. Diabetic what? Nephropathy. That's right. And that glucose level is directly impacting that. So going back again, right, what do we say? What's this column? What do we call them? Cations. Good. What about this one? All right, now we did the positive charges. This would be the negative charges, the anions. Fantastic. And then here, we've got our what? Our buffers with the neutral charge. And we said goose egg for that one, but we redraw it as a kidney bean, just to remind us that we're talking about BUN and creatinine. And then what's cutting across those two? The glucose. Right. Okay, now, let's get a little deeper into the values. And here we go. So we remembered that it was the Chem 7 and, right, we've got sodium and chloride here. Now, okay, so we want to make sure that you set this up right. And with each of these fish bones, you'll find that they always start out with that thing that would jog your memory about how to set this up. And what would jog your memory about that sodium and that chloride? This is like the most popular IV fluid in the whole hospital, right? Every other patient's got sodium chloride, okay? And so that's how we fit that right in there. What do we say? We start with the positivity. The positive charge one is sodium. The negatively charged one is chloride. Yes. Now, I want you to notice something. We realize that potassium has a positive charge as it shows up in this column with the cations, right? And potassium's level, 3.5 to 5. Whatever you do, make sure, make sure you remember these. Boy, do they show up on a lot of tests in nursing school and medical school and these kinds of things, any kind of medical science you're studying even outside of those sciences. Sodium and potassium, those are great electrolytes to just, boom, commit to memory. But we're gonna try to get them all, right? Okay, so anyway, we know that sodium's 135 to 145, and we know that potassium's 3.5 to 5, okay? And notice it's 3.5 to 5, not 5.0. We try not to have trailing zeros and have people mix that up and think it's 50 or something like that. 3.525, okay? Now, with that in mind, right away, what I want you to notice, 
if you've had anatomy and physiology, or you've been in circles where they were talking about cells, and inside your bloodstream and things like that, and you hear people mention it, sodium potassium pump, sodium potassium pump, right? And cells have that membrane, and the sodium potassium pump is, is, is pumping things in and out of the cell. Well, we see that concept manifesting itself right away in the Chem Center. Sodium potassium pump. Okay? Again, like I said, it's a pretty powerful uh, information to have under your belt. Next up, let's look at the chloride. So the chloride, 95 to 105 in here. So you're looking at that going, man, ooh, it's a lot of numbers, right? So check this out. Okay, so you go to the neighborhood pool, and what do you see? Kids running around having a good time, right? <laughs> In and out of the pool. When they get out of the pool, do you ever see them go to the restroom? Sorry, let's tell the truth. No. <laughs> right? So how effective do we want the chlorine in the pool, right? Chlorine, chloride. We want it to be as close to 100% as possible. That puts us at 95 and 105. And by the way, if we said 100%, yes, and we decreased it by 5 and increased it by 5, which was one of our what when we started? Magic number. You guessed it. There we go. Okay. Now, this HCO3, don't be thrown by that. Some people see a lot of symbols and things like that and letters. It's like, oh, Lord, here it comes. It's like, no, no, no. It's not that big of a deal. Bicarb. Okay, so bicarb, check that out, bicarbonate, okay, but bicarb, doesn't it sound like buying a car, and people are what, age 22 to 26, when they buy a car, bicarb, okay, now, what are we doing, study smart, not hard, well, you know, I take that back, <laughs> study hard too, but you know what I mean, get that study smart part down, okay, now, <laughs> Uh, BUN, all right, blood urea nitrogen, as we mentioned earlier. Now that BUN, uh, so we're looking at three letters here, B, U, N, magic number, yes. Then what? We're assigning seven to each one of these well, each one of these letters. And so if we do that and assign seven to each letter, right? What happens? We get B U, N, and we said 7 for each one, so that would be 7 plus 7 would be 14 plus 7 would be 21, wouldn't it? Absolutely. So 7 to 21 is the B-U-N. Super easy, okay? Using our what? Magic numbers again. 3 for the letters going across. Right? And seven. Boom. All right, now, uh, I'll remaining in this column here with our buffers, more on the kidney function, the creatinine. But right now, I'm going to relate it to creation. What about here? Brace yourself. Because this, this thing's going to be, the story's going to be painful at first. All right? But you, you'll get by it, but you'll never forget. Trust me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, so anyway, creatinine. Sounds like the word what? Creation. Ah, so here we go. So you sitting right there watching this right now. What did your mom contribute to you being born? Huh? What did she contribute? This right here. She contributed an egg. Yes. Okay. And that was your mom. How about your dad? Your dad contributed a what? A sperm. Wait for it, right? There's the tail of it, and there's the head of it. That circle right there. And what happened before you were conceived? Well, your mom and your dad, hey, <laughs> I told you it was going to be painful, but here we go. Right? So, uh, her egg and his sperm met at what? The head of his sperm and her egg met at some point. Now that helps us out, because we don't confuse that with 0.9. We said the egg and the sperm met, right? The head to the egg, 
at some point. So it's point 0.6. Okay? Now, uh, as far as the 1.2, when your cell began to germinate and began to split, what do we call that splitting process? You remember that term? It was mitosis, right? Mitosis. Now, we make these terms harder than they need to be. Check it out. If we go to Home Depot and we get a miter saw, right? Mitosis, miter saw. So in the case of a miter saw, what are we doing? We're going to take a two by four and we're going to cut that two by four. That one piece is going to be cut into how many? Two pieces. So miter, right? Mitosis, the splitting into two. And by the way, uh, just kind of a fast forward into some uh, heart action there. When we start talking about the bicuspid valve, what, two cusps? Also known as the what? Mitral valve. You guessed it. What? Splitting into two cusps. Just like bicuspid. All right. We'll get there. And so back to what we were doing. So we said 0 0.6, right? And if we're applying mitosis to that, so your one cell turned into how many cells? Two cells. And then your two cells, when you're inside of your mom, turned into four. Four cells mitosed into eight cells, correct? All right. And in that same fashion, if we're going to double when there's creation involved, we're doubling 0 0.6 and turning it into 1.2. Check that out, right? <laughs> That's not too, not too difficult to understand. Then that. Conveniently, as we start to talk about glucose, notice the numbers between creatinine and glucose. They are looking very much alike. They're just off by a couple of decimal places. So, right? Glucose, similar to that, but 60. And what do we do? Double that 60 and turn it into 120. And there you have it, your basic breakdown of the Chem 7, which tells you a whole lot. Going back to the beginning, we said what? Sodium potassium, as in sodium potassium pump. We skipped over this part and came here and talked about kidney function. And we already know about glucose, the sugar in your body, especially relating to diabetes. But let's go back to the middle, okay? What is the name of the acid that's located inside your stomach? If you said hydrochloric acid, you are correct. Hydrochloric acid. Acid, right? So the more chlorine that you have in your body, which is full of hydrogen, right? The more acid your body can create. Well, what neutralizes that acid and tends to work against it? Bicarb, right? Just like the bicarb that we might find in baking soda or the bicarb that we might find in tongue to try to address a person's stomach acid, right? Yes, bicarb. So, there we have it. Sodium potassium pump. And then we see that this is going to impact our pH level in our body and in our kidney function studies, and in our glucose. And there you have it, your Chem 7, your BMP, all important. Stay tuned.